What's up guys, welcome back to the channel. Today we are going to be showing you guys how to install a Prince roof rack on a Toyota Tacoma with an Air Raid snorkel. If you guys are new here and you guys are not subscribed yet, make sure you guys subscribe to the channel. If you guys like Toyota content, anything from off-road to parts to installs like that, so be sure to click that subscribe button. But now, let's go ahead and get into the install. So in the packaging, this is what we're going to get. So we got our hardware bag here the two side plates, driver's side and passenger side. And this is gonna be our front wind fairing with the noise trim reducer here. And then we, of course, we have all the load bars. They're all black except for one. The single one is gonna be for your light bar. This one is actually going to sit behind the fairing. So save that one for that. But this is what is all included. In the hardware bags, you will find these three bags. They will all be labeled. This one here is labeled wind deflector hardware package. It'll have the part numbers and the quantity of what's in there. And then over here, you guys will find the Viber type. This is great for um, applying on the hardware so that way when you guys are off road, it doesn't actually vibrate the hardware out. Over here, you guys will find the tie down rings. These are really good for holding stuff down on the roof. You can also use them with some uh, longer hardware to actually use them to hold down max tracks or recovery boards. So with this black hardware here, what we are doing is that we are applying the Vibratite on them and you only need to apply a section of it since it's gonna get spreaded once it's actually in the load bar. So this is the driver's side side plate. And what we are doing here is we are installing the very back load bar and the reason why we are installing it vertically is so that way when you put it on the roof it will actually clear that black antenna if you put it the other way it will not clear and it will make contact so don't do that another thing is that these three uh, feet that are on the rack will actually coordinate with the factory holes that are already existing on the actual roof itself what we are doing now is that we are installing the noise trim reducer, which is optional. Um, but I highly suggest this to pretty much everybody just because this is going to save you a lot of headache from the wind noise that you can get with the front wind fairing. One thing to note when you guys are installing load bars is these drop-in points. These allow you to pretty much put a bolt in there to install any accessories or lights or anything to them. So make sure they are faced out or up. So what we've done here is we've installed all the load bars with the dropping points all facing up as you guys can see here. And another thing is that you guys have options to install the load bars wherever you want. So there's a small slot and a big slot. We have it in the bigger slot just because we have more adjustability that way. So that way we can move it around easier. Next we are going to install these flat nuts into the silver load bar and they will just slide at the very end just like this. And then you guys will use some kind of uh, flathead or Phillips head to move them into position. Then grab your windscreen, line up the uh, flat nuts underneath, and install the hardware. And once again, all these hardwares are labeled, so you guys can't really mix them up. On the very front of the side plates, um, you guys will find four holes. These holes will coordinate with the silver load bar, so that way you guys can adjust the um, front windscreen up or down and the reason you guys want to do that is really depending on where you guys want to mount your light bar so you can mount it here on the very front black load bar mount it here on the silver load bar behind the windscreen and it just really depends on your light bar setup and what you guys want to do and then since we have a, an air raid snorkel we are going to be drilling two holes into the side plate here in the very front so that way we can mount the head of the actual snorkel. Now we are on the roof of the Tacoma. What we're doing here is we're using a pry tool to pry up the black weather stripping using a pry tool. You guys could use a flat head as well. You guys don't need something um, like this to actually pry it. So once you guys are pulling it up you guys will see there is double sided tape. This truck has had a roof rack on here before, so that's why there's aftermarket double-sided tape on there. Once you guys have the weather strip removed, you guys may find these holes. If you guys don't find them, just look for this piece of tape, or that looks like tape, and it will be color matched to your color. 
um, what you need to do is grab a Phillips or something pointy, just poke down into it and you guys will find the threaded holes down, down there. Every Tacoma, a double cab Tacoma will have these. Next, what we are doing is we are loosening and removing the actual head of the uh, air raid snorkel. Next up, we have some masking tape and what we are doing here is we are putting the edge of the tape to the center of the hole. And what this is gonna do, it's gonna give us a nice reference so that way when we put the weather strip back on, we'll know exactly where to mark it. Next up, go ahead and lay your weather strip back on and then you guys can kind of see here, it kind of lays down there pretty nicely. So now we know where exactly the middle of the hole is on the actual weather strip. Now we can go ahead and find the edge of the masking tape. And then we are going to put a mark through the actual weather stripping horizontally and vertically. So that way we have kind of a bullseye to where the center is. So you guys can really do this two ways. You can cut it at the very end, so that way you guys um, will have that whole section knocked out. Or what we are doing is we are using a 3 4 hole punch to actually make a hole pretty much dead center of where we put that, um, that cross. And what that does is re it retains as much of the actual weather strip as it can, so that way we don't lose any strength or um, anything from the actual weather strip. So we put the weather strip on the roof here and as you guys can see here the hole lines up perfectly on each and every single one and now we don't really have a section missing out of the actual weather strip like you would if you were to cut that section. And another really nice thing is that these spacers that are provided with the rack fit into the holes exactly so that way there is almost no wiggle room at all and that way it's, it's as sealed as you can get it. So now what we are doing is we are putting some waterproof silicone down into the holes and it really doesn't really matter what kind of silicone you guys use or color um, as long as it's 100% waterproof. So you guys will want to put it down into the actual thread itself. Now you can go ahead and put the spacer in the hole as well and then also put some silicone down in the spacer now you guys will want to carefully move the rack onto the actual roof itself and then lay it right over the spacers that you guys have just installed and then if you guys look here we have um, put the or loosen this load bar and the reason why we loosen this load bar is that way we can get to that middle foot there um, to put the bolt down then you can go ahead and install the hardware um, for the roof rack to the roof itself. And then once you guys have started them all by hand, you can go ahead and tighten them down one at a time. And then before you guys snug it all the way down, just make sure that it is centered because you do have a little wiggle room from side to side. So you guys can kind of see why the spacers are needed here. So the spacer is kind of provide a little bit of space between the roof and the rack so that way you guys actually load the rack up it won't actually contact the top of the roof. So now if you guys have a snorkel you guys can do this part if not you guys can skip it. So what we're doing here is we have a pen that actually has a removable felt tip and what we are doing is we're sticking it in the hole where it's threaded on the actual air raid and then using that to kind of mark where we need to on the Prinzu. So we'll do that to both holes right there. That'll mark two holes that we need to go into on the actual Prinzu. We'll pull that felt part out and these pens are pretty generic. You can pretty much get them at any craft store. We ordered these on Amazon. Um, but they fit in there and then what we will do is drill two holes so now we can go ahead and use a center punch to mark our center so that way the drill bit doesn't slide all over the place the snorkel has plenty of play so we can move it out of the way to get a um, drill in there so we're going to be using a angle drill
Now we are going to install the front windscreen. Before you install the snorkel, you'll want to do this first just because once you have that snorkel on, you won't be able to access back there to install the two bolts. So we'll get these ones on first for both sides. After you have your windscreen installed, you can then install the hardware and the spacer that goes in between the snorkel and the side plate of the roof rack. And then you guys take note here, we have it on the lowest setting for the windscreen. So you have four holes here. So you can move it up or move it down. Having it down all the way will have that noise trim reducer touch the roof, but this position will actually um, reduce the amount of noise you guys will get from the wind. So this is probably the best position. Then once you guys have them both started with the spacer in between the snorkel and the side plate, go ahead and tighten them all the way down. And then we can install the head back on. Make sure it's all the way down and then you can go ahead and tighten it up. And as you guys can kind of see right there, we have just enough space in between the side plate and the snorkel head so that way it doesn't actually rub on it. Just make sure it's all the way down. But well, one thing to note is that when you guys are down here on the ground, it will look like it is slightly crooked um, just because that head is meant to be more towards the roof. But being that we had to space it out, it's going to tilt a little bit to the, uh, the passenger side. So we didn't really like the way that it looked all tilted. So what we did was we loosened that up hold it to one side so that way it comes off um, on the passenger side so the passenger side is actually not completely flush with where it was supposed to be but it's actually leveled and you guys can see there comparing with the um, the roof rack so now it actually looks pretty dang straight compared to where it was at but um, yeah, just, a, just a little tip if you guys want it to look straight just lift the passenger side just a little bit um, and then tighten it there all right guys that is gonna be it for this video hopefully it was helpful and i will have the parts of this rack in the description below if you guys are interested in getting that and supporting our channel but that will be it if you guys are not subscribed make sure you guys are subscribed and we'll see you guys next time peace